Today is Pi Day in the year 2017. What a great day to talk about data types built into Java. Here we're showing examples of three different data types, a decimal number known as a double, an integer, and a boolean which can take only the values true and false. There are actually eight different data types that are primitives or built-ins in Java. Let's have a quick look at them. These are all the primitives that Java has to offer. We discussed already that the boolean takes values of true and false. The byte is a single 8-bit quantity. We also have a data type called a character, which can store uh, a letter of the alphabet, also any other Unicode character that's available. Uh, we have a short. We also have the integer, which we talked about. We have a long. We have a float which is a smaller version of the decimal number, which is the 32-bit version. And we have the double, which is the one that we're going to be using throughout our course, which is also a 64-bit number. Dealing with these eight different primitive data types in Java can be confusing. So in this course, we're going to restrict ourselves to working with only three of these, the double, the integer, and the Boolean. One word of caution when dealing with integers is that Java does not automatically convert integers to decimal numbers. Furthermore, it does not round the answers. For example, if we had one integer defined as 5 and another defined as 6, what do you think will be the result if we divide 5 by 6? Let's compile and run this program and see what the answer comes out to be, because it might surprise some of you. Notice that the answer we got is zero. Why didn't we get a decimal number? Well, Java assumes that if you're dividing one integer by another, you must want an integer result. Furthermore, instead of rounding the answer up to one, Java chooses to truncate when doing integer division. In addition to providing the eight built-in or primitive data types, Java also allows the user to define their own data types. These are called classes. Let's say, for example, we had a class called dog, and we wanted to create a new dog. The syntax for doing so would look like this. Here we define the data type that we want. So instead of integer or double, we have dog as the data type. We have a variable, and on the other side, we use the keyword new to get a new object of the data type. The parentheses surrounding the dog statement on the right is a call to something called a constructor that we will discuss in a later video. Right now, all you need to understand is that this line creates a new dog and sets it to the variable Luna. One specific data type we wish to discuss before leaving this video is a particular class that's been built into the Java libraries already called a string. Let's look at how strings are used. This is the shortcut way to create a string. A longer way is like this. We'll deal much more with strings towards the end of the course, but right now, understand that these are the two different ways we can create one. This is the preferred method because it takes less typing. Finally, before leaving this tutorial, let's discuss briefly how we can tell the difference between a primitive data type and one that has been created by the user or a class. Do you notice that the primitive data types here have been highlighted in red by the blue jay? Furthermore, there's an important rule in Java that classes that are defined by the user always start with a capital letter, in this case, dog and string. Meanwhile, data types that are primitives in Java always start with a lowercase letter. 